Okay, we're going to start out with just a little bit of housekeeping here. Um, just for awareness, uh, everybody's microphones and cameras are turned off by default. And we just ask that you um, keep it that way during the formal presentation. In addition to that, uh, just for everybody to know that all materials and a recording of this presentation will be available on our website after the open house. Um, and uh, for more project information, you can always feel free to visit our project website um, on the Public Works website. Uh, next slide, please, Steve. Um, for those of you that are new to Zoom meetings, um, just a, another reminder here that we ask that all your um, videos are turned off and you are muted. Uh, just to clarify, you should see the red slash lines through the icons near the bottom of your screen to confirm that. Um, if you have questions during the presentation or after it, you can use the chat function as shown with the icon here. Thanks, Steve. And uh, just please ensure that the chat is sent to everyone via that drop down shown there with the red circle. Um, if you're having technical challenges, um, you need assistance with that, feel free to message the host directly. You'll also do the drop down arrow um, circled in red there to contact the host directly. Next slide, please. Okay, so for tonight's agenda, we're gonna step everybody through a few topics here. First off, we're just gonna introduce the project team. After that, we're gonna go over our project background. Uh, then we'll summarize our project outreach efforts. We're gonna also discuss the proposed improvements as they're currently uh, slated. And we're gonna tail up our meeting tonight with going through a virtual Q&A session where we'll be able to answer some questions for everybody. Next slide, please. So um, introducing the project team here. Hi, everybody. My name is Nate Ensley. I'm a project manager with Thurston County Public Works' Water Resources Division. And I'm joined here tonight by um, our design engineering consultant, AHBL. Uh, on the call here, we have David Mason. He's a principal engineer with the company, as well as Steve Nickerson. He's the lead project engineer on this project. And we also have Miriam Velesian on the line and she's part of our public outreach team. Next slide, please. I'll pass it off to you, David. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us uh, today. Uh, with this presentation, we're gonna go through and identify um, some of the project opportunities on this uh, Boston Harbor project that we're uh, going to be looking at. Uh, uh, the goals of the project were to improve drainage infrastructure along this corridor. Uh, We'll uh, walk you through uh, how we're looking at replacing some aging uh, infrastructure, such as a, as an old outfall into the sound. Uh, these items are being looked at and our opportunities in order to decrease uh, the flooding and property damage that uh, happens during large storm events out here, and also um, to increase uh, public safety uh, by getting uh, water out of the ditches and off the roads and out of people's properties. Next slide, Steve. Uh, as many of you know, uh, but uh, just to catch a couple of people up to speed who may not have been on any of these uh, public meetings uh, before, is the uh, uh, there's a lot of aging infrastructure along the Boston Harbor corridor, and a lot of these um, culverts and pipes and ditches along along the corridor have a uh, limited capacity that are not able to convey the amount of storm water that is needed to get the water um, out of the out of the road and ditches. Uh, as you can see in the picture, there's a lot of culverts and whatnot that have been filled in over time uh, with erosion and sediment that's uh, been uh, transferred uh, down these ditches. And then uh, we're also looking at uh, replacing an outfall um, that out outlets into the sound that has been causing uh, some erosion due to high velocities and the amount of storm water coming out of it. Um, uh, again, the need for this project is based on that there has been a lot of uh, flooding uh, in this area. Uh, large storms overwhelm the ditches, which then flood into people's properties. Uh, this causes a lot of damage as it leaves the ditches and then also the uh, the large velocities of these waters coming down to the beach has been contributing to quite a bit of, of beach erosion. So, 
Kaminsky. Uh, uh, our firm has done a, a modeling effort, a stormwater modeling effort where we've analyzed the corridor and we've identified, uh, uh, this is a map of the screen, we've identified out there where there have been some existing conveyance uh, concerns out there where there have been ditches and culverts that have been that are undersized for what's needed and that is where our project is focusing uh, the increases in capacity and improvements uh, and a little a little further on in the inner the presentation uh, Steve's going to kind of walk us through uh, street by street where these improvements are are being made and then finally we're also improving the uh, outfall on the beach, which has been uh, deteriorating quite a bit. As you can see in the photograph, there is a lot of erosion that's being called by, caused by the high velocities of the stormwater coming out of the, the, uh, the conveyance system. Uh, the concrete and kind of revetment around this outfall is failing and needing to be uh, restored. And then you can also see that it is also starting to undermine some of the existing bulkheads out there. So the proposed improvements will also be addressing addressing those concerns. Okay, I'm going to step us through just a brief summary of Thurston County's public outreach efforts to date. Um, this is comprised of two slides on the PowerPoint here. Uh, the first slide you see here is for year 2020. Um, as you can see here, just to highlight a few of our efforts here, we distributed a handful of postcards just notifying the community and residents about the work that we plan on doing. Um, those postcards were you know, either part of our standard outreach process or some of those postcards were required uh, based on specific permits that we needed to acquire for this project. Um, in August 2020, we held the first online open house for this project. Um, just to hear the community's concerns and uh, get some questions answered for you. And Steve, next slide, please. Uh, looking at 2021 now, you can see again that we sent out a, another handful of postcards to the community. Um, my first day with the county was actually August 2nd, 2021. And so once I came on board, we um, met with the residents in person a couple times just to hear comments, questions, concerns, and um, take any requests under consideration. And I'd also like to highlight here that in September, we began a uh, semi-monthly email distribution to subscribed individuals. Thanks. Next slide. Right, thanks, Nate. Um, I'll take over now. Again, uh, my name is Steve Nickerson. Uh, I'm civil project engineer with HPL. Uh, so I'll be discussing the proposed improvements for the project. And uh, just again, a reminder that we're only replacing the culverts and ditches on the project that, um, that don't have adequate capacity to pass that, the 100 year storm. Um, the outfall behind uh, 7329 Boston Arbor Road will. Um, will also be replaced and that's going to help to convey stormwater and reduce beach erosion. Uh, this graphic on the right hand side of the screen that I have here uh, helps to visualize kind of what we're seeking to accomplish. So um, at both ends of this pipe, uh, this kind of rectangle in the center here is a, a stormwater pipe and uh, it's actually the culvert model at 73rd Avenue on uh, the western side. Uh, on either end, these are junctions where uh, the culvert connects to the ditch. And um, in the existing condition, this pipe gets completely uh, surcharged and starts to accumulate stormwater on the uh, southern side of the ditch so much that would actually uh, pop over the roadway and begin to flow over the road. Um, so this same spot modeled in our proposed stormwater model, uh, the pipe does fill up in the 100 year. And you know, it, for a 100 year event, that's, that's not uncommon. But the, the flow stays within the ditch and, and wouldn't pop over the roadway. So it, it keep a, a safe condition for, uh, for the residents here in Boston Harbor. Um, gonna, so I split the work area up into was that uh, seven different areas. Um, 
we're generally going to move south to north along Boston Harbor Road, and then we'll fishtail back to uh, 73rd Ave and the outfall. So um, just keep an eye. This map will be in uh, the bottom left of the screen, at highlighting where we're talking about. So um, if you're curious on where we are, I, I have a bunch of labels, and um, I'll try to keep you guys informed as far as where we're talking about, but reference that map too. Uh, so the first area we're going to talk about is area A, uh, it's kind of the southern end of the project, and it's uh, just south of 72nd Ave. So um, when you're looking at these graphics, I have a legend here, uh, this orange dashed line is the limits of work or the disturbed area to get these improvements in. Uh, we have these, uh, these blue kind of a circle with a square in it and just just a square, and those are storm manholes and catch basins, or your uh, your drainage structures for uh, storm sewers. The solid blue lines are going to be drainage piping or culverts, and um, on this side we just have culverts. But when we get to more pipe systems, I'll um, explain more about that. Anywhere where we have this light green line is where the ditch is being regraded to connect to. Uh, replace culverts. And then where we're doing driveway or uh, roadway replacement, uh, we have different colors for asphalt and then this uh, kind of plus hatched area for gravel surfacing. So uh, going back to the first area, just south of 72nd Ave, uh, we have two undersized driveway culverts that are being upsize and replaced and the driveways and ditches are replaced or regraded to um, to meet with the existing conditions. All right, moving north uh, here at 72nd Way, uh, both the western and eastern culverts under 72nd Way are undersized. And um, for the proposed condition, those are being upsized. So uh, again, those are being replaced. The ditches are being regraded and adjusted to meet the replaced culvert. And, uh, and so the, the work limits surround that area. Next, we're gonna move to area C and this is at 73rd Avenue. Um, 73rd Avenue is kind of east-west here. On, we'll start on the, the western side. Um, this driveway and the uh, western culvert under 73rd Avenue are undersized and will be upsized and replaced with some ditch regrading. On the eastern side, we are also um, upsizing the culvert under 73rd Ave. You'll notice this section extending to the east. Uh, that's some further work that we're doing up 73rd Ave. I'll touch that on another slide. So uh, hang tight on that scope. Um, as we move further north, you'll notice that I have this long kind of blue, uh, blue line with the D on it. Um, and that's gonna be a tight line storm system. So what that means is it's gonna be a, a solid uh, stormwater pipe that's under a ditch and uh, there'll be a shallower ditch on top of that pipe and um, so drainage coming off the roadway will go into the the ditch itself and uh, flow into the pipe via these storm structures uh, but a majority of the storm water is actually going to pass under that ditch through the uh, the storm sewer that we're installing and uh, that's what you're seeing here there's a, a bit more work here on the western side as we move further north. Uh, we have a new cross culvert that's being installed going under Boston Harbor Road. And I'll explain more on that when we get to the outflow side on, on why we're installing that. Um, but we have a little bit of ditch regrading and then going to a new tight line system as we move towards the outfall. All right, great. So moving north again, um, area D here, we're kind of tucked here between 74th Ave and 74th Way. Um, this is all being tight lined as well. So think uh, solid or stormwater pipe underneath a sh shallow ditch 
and um, the flow starts to move north to south instead of south to north as um, as the case with the southern end of the project. So uh, flow is going to be kind of moving the way my mouse is moving right now. Um, so we're going to tight line to the existing outfall that uh, runs up to um, up to the harbor, and then uh, as we get further north, it'll move back to a ditch and culvert system, um, and that's going to continue up to 74th Way. You'll notice that there's a lot of asphalt replacement here at the 74th Way intersection, and uh, that's because we're going to be regrading this portion of the roadway to establish a better crown in the road. And uh, that's going to help to prevent water from flowing down 74th way and jumping over the roadway and inundating these houses here on the western side of the road. So kind of the northern point of our project here is area E. And uh, this is just south of 75th way. Uh, which is just the north of here. And uh, here we're, again, just replacing culverts that are undersized and doing some uh, driveway adjustments. Uh, you'll notice there's an existing retaining wall here. That retaining wall is, uh, is set to remain. It, it will not be uh, taken out. And uh, the ditch will not be regraded in front of that retaining wall. There is some minor work here at this kind of golf tee shaped uh, block. And uh, that's a section of riprap that's being installed to help to reduce erosion from um, a somewhat sizable stream that starts to run down this hillside in a heavy storm. Uh, so, so that's what's going on there. And so again, moving further north, we ha just have some uh, driveway culverts being replaced and upsized. We're going to jump back down to 73rd Avenue now here at Area F. Um, again, we have that long kind of uh, tight line storm system, and that's going to be underneath that shallow ditch. The shallow ditch will take the road conveyance and uh, plug it into these storm structures here, which will then plunge that down into our new storm sewer and um, an outgoing north to the outfall. And speaking on the outfall, uh, we're here at area G. This is just at the end, uh, kind of the southeastern point of the harbor, uh, looking at our mini map down here. And um, I'll first start with the cross culvert. So there's two outfalls that, uh, that drain this area. There's one just north of uh, where we are in plan view. And that's an existing a fairly large 27-inch uh, pipe. And uh, right now, that receives a majority of the stormwater drainage for this basin. Um, but one of the project goals and, and one of the, uh, the ways we were able to reduce and, um, and split the stormwater flow was to actually install a new cross culvert going under Boston Harbor Road, and that helps to equalize the flow between the, uh, the northern outfall and our replaced outfall, uh, which helps to alleviate the flooding uh, across the basin. So as we uh, work our way up behind and through the 7325 and 7329 parcels, we're replacing the existing storm pipe that's installed here and, and the structures as well. And then we'll be replacing the outfall. Uh, and I'll go into detail on what that outfall replacement actually looks like on the following slides. So uh, just another reminder before we get to the proposed condition of the outfall, um, just the existing condition. Uh, as David mentioned earlier, there's a lot of erosion. Uh, outfall is in uh, not the best shape. And uh, so we're, we're seeking to reconstruct portions of it and uh, and make it a, a better final product. So this is the proposed outfall. Um, again, this is up here in that southeast corner of the harbor. Uh, there's two existing bulkheads kind of running here. If you can see my mouse in the upper right hand portion of the screen. And then uh, we have that kind of void where 
the existing outfall is. Uh, so we're going to be filling in the outfall and uh, in putting it two hard pipes going out to a, a new head wall structure. Uh, so looking at our cross section over here, we have uh, basically the beach and um, a big a concrete head wall, which is basically a, a flat vertical uh, concrete wall that will be installed across between those two bulkheads. Uh, where the two pipes exit that head wall will be um, these duckbill structures. And that's a, a large rubber, um, it's, it's a large rubber kind of um, slit that gets installed. And as the water begins to fill up the pipe, it slowly trickles out the bottom. Uh, these things do wonders to reduce velocity coming out of a storm pipe. So this will be, uh, this will be key in reducing erosion coming out of our outfall. Uh, coming back from the head wall and the duck bills, we have our two 24 inch pipes going to a, a new uh, stormwater vault and that vault will be installed to split the flow of stormwater between our two uh, outfall pipes. Um, so again, this is getting infilled with uh, basically a soil crushed rock and there'll be a, uh, a layer of mulch on top of it. And Nate, I'll hand it back to you for schedule. Thanks, Steve. Okay, so I'm sure most people are wondering, you know, when is all this gonna happen? So we're gonna go over the schedule here. Um, so over the past couple of months here, we've been working to wrap up our 90% design, um, late 2021, and HBL's um, about to submit the 100% design that we can use for construction. Um, as you can see in the second tile here, we're obviously in our open house, quarter one, 2022. Um, and as our current schedule shows, we're hoping to start construction in quarter three this year. Um, just a quick comment on that. I, I heard that the Boston Harbor neighborhood has quite the magnificent July 4th celebration every year. And I want to assure everybody that we're gonna try to time the start of construction after that July 4th celebration, because uh, that sounds like too much chaos um, near July 4th for us to be constructing. Um, and then, since this is a stormwater project, we really like to construct our facilities in the dry season so that it can be ready to accept stormwater in the wet season. With that said, we currently anticipate that construction would be ending by um, when the rainy season starts in fall 2022. And Steve, I'll let you pop to the next slide here. And that concludes our formal presentation tonight, everybody. Um, we're going to transition a little bit to a Q&A session here. And again, um, this will be virtual through the chat function on the Zoom call here. Um, so feel free to type in your message. I just do ask that you send your message to everyone. And what I'll do is I'll read off the questions and provide our best answer for it. Um, before we dive into that, in the lower left-hand tile on the screen here, you can see that there's a general contact email and phone number for this project, but in the Zoom chat for this meeting, um, I also provided my personal uh, email address and phone number if any of you would prefer to ask questions that way. Okay, um, I'm gonna start stepping through a few of the questions here. So far there's only one, but I assume a number of you are typing. So Tom is asking, sorry, Tom pointed out that it looks like the scope of the work for the project has been reduced. Um, will this show up in a lower cost? Tom, that answer is absolutely. Um, with the previous scope that we had, I think the construction costs came in right around $1.1 million anticipated. Um, with the most recent design that HBL has put together, we've knocked off about four hundred dollars to $500,000 from the project. So we'll, we'll see a savings there. Okay, this question is from David Hartley here. It says, the limits of work are not sufficient to portray impacts of the project on landscape. When can we see an actual plan set? Um, let me think about how to answer that one real quick. So we, 
We're about to have the final plan set right now. Um, I'm happy to share that electronically uh, with anybody that wants to send me a direct email. Um, if anybody is hoping for a hard copy, my administrative staff has instructed me that you might have to pay for that to have us print um, an 11 by 17 plan set for you. Either way, feel free to route any requests for the actual plan set directly to me. Um, next question here. Sorry if I mispronounced the name here, but the name is D. Uh, Lagarde. Sorry if I said that wrong. Um, in the map, it says, in the map that was shown, there was a 74th Avenue shown, but that street in front of my property is a private driveway. The driveway in front of my guest house is paved with loose gravel over the top, but is shown as only gravel being replaced. Steve, can I tell me to go back to the slide that showed 74th Ave really quick? Yeah, I believe it's this one. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what the question is here. Uh, the question says um, the, the driveway to their guest house is paved with loose gravel over the top, but is shown as only gravel being replaced. Um, all in all, we're really hoping to ensure that replaced surface material for any driveways or roadways are basically matching the material that we have today in February. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, this one's from Boston Harbor iPad. Um, will Boston Harbor be repaved or just patched in front of Nancy Brown's? Um, so essentially what I like to call projects like this are surgical improvements in nature. As you can see on the screen here, there's just that patch shown for being replaced in front of 74th Way. Um, I would like to let everybody know that I am coordinating with our roadway operations division, and they do have um, plans to resurface Boston Harbor Road, um, but we want to time that so it happens after our project so you get one nice, smooth, consistent surface instead of a bunch of patchwork. Um, let's see here. Okay, this question is from Nancy Brown. Um, what will be the effect of the, oh, sorry, my screen jumped. What will be the effect of the road work at the intersection of Boston Harbor Road and 74th Way on those exiting from 74th Way? Um, so as far as during construction, um, we'll make sure that you all have access the entire time. We can kind of cut the road down the middle and make sure that you have access on either side with some traffic control measures. Um, as far as the what that will permanently feel like, it's going to feel a lot like it does today. It's just going to have slightly different slopes to help bring stormwater to the south side of that entrance there to get it into the ditches as much as possible. OK, this one's from. Um, the Boston Harbor iPad again. It says our driveway at 7512. And real quick, Steve, can I have us jump to 7512? Okay, there it is. Okay. Is being shown as a significant amount of re gravel. Um, I'm happy to hear it'll match the gravel already in place. Okay, so that looks like a comment instead of a question. I'm glad we're taking care of you there. Um, Okay, uh, this one from D, La sorry about the name again, Lagarde again. Um, what is the plan for mailboxes and post removal? Initially, we were told to be removed and replaced with an all new standard mailboxes and DOT metal posts, which would detract significantly from the character of the neighborhood. Has this been revised? Um, David, feel free to step in here, but it's my understanding that we do have detail callouts for temporary mailbox on our plans. Is that correct? Or, or Steve, if you know off the top of your head. We are we are replacing the mailboxes that are being impacted. That's correct. And do we specify whether those are permanent uh, replacements or temporary? 
uh, they'd be permanent replaced and the ones I mean the ones that are within the construction limits they are. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question on the mailboxes. Um, mailboxes during construction is another question here from Boston over iPad. Um, we we will ensure that there is some kind of temporary mailbox set up in front of your house so the so USPS can get to those. Um, Neil Sexton is asking, will some of the saved funds be available for landscape reclamation or improvement? Uh, appears like now, appears the plan now has more landscape disruption in section A. Um, Neil, and unfortunately, I don't think we can use the saved funds to, to remedy the landscaping improvements just because um, respectfully that the landscaping that we might have to remove is technically an encroachment in the Thurston County right away. And uh, it's my understanding that Thurston County has a general policy that we do not um, typically replace mature vegetation that's in our right away, nor do we provide compensation for that. Okay, Tom looks like we have another question here. In the beginning, the ditches were going to be made to the county roadway design standards. Will the standards be used where culverts are put under the roads and joining the existing ditches? Um, looks like there's a specific example here, corner of Boston Harbor and 72nd Way. And if the ditches are okay, why have the standard that is not going to be followed? Okay, so a couple different questions there. So first off, um, Tom, you are right. In our previous scope, we were bringing all of the roadside ditches into current county roadway design standards. Um, the effect that that had was quite a bit of removal of um, amenities that are, you know, encroachments in the right-of-way that the community enjoys. We're talking about, um, you know, a couple of you have bridges out there, decorative mailboxes, um, not to mention mature um, bushes and even some large trees. Um, so one kind of shift in scope that the county made is to pull back on the specific ditch regrading solely for the purpose of bringing it into roadway standards. And now any ditch regrading will be solely to help us tie into newly um, upsized culverts. Um, and, if, and also if there's any ditches that contribute to the actual flooding issues itself, those will be graded too. Okay. And, and then, sorry, the follow-up question here is, if the ditches are okay in the existing condition, why have the standard that's not gonna be followed? Um, essentially, we're, we're trying to you know, engage with the community here and make sure that um, we're not you know, uh, regrading things that aren't actually contributing to the flooding, which is what this project seeks to address. David Hartley is asking, how will the project reduce culvert sedimentation that was cited as a problem early in the presentation? Um, let me think about that one real quick. David, do you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. The, um, the culverts are being replaced with, uh, with new pipes, so they'll be uh, smoother and have better uh, uh, characteristics uh, allowing the water to have uh, like a cleansing velocity uh, typically we try to have uh, pipes get uh, two to three feet per second cleansing velocity that way when the water goes through there they're go it's going fast enough where they'll be able to kind of clean themselves uh, so with, with that hydraulics and the new materials we're hoping that'll reduce the amount of sedimentation in the pipes Thanks, David. Okay, next question here. Nancy Brown is asking, will our existing mailboxes be preserved and restored? Um, just touching back to the previous question that was similar to this. Um, uh, no, they won't be preserved or restored since we're gonna be replacing them with mailboxes. So if you have um, a non-standard, I'll call it a decorative mailbox of some kind, um, we can coordinate as we get closer to construction and uh, you could feel free to um, pull that and protect it, I suppose. But um, unfortunately, I don't believe the county is really allowed to help, you know, 
remove that, do our work, and then reinstall it for, for you from a liability perspective. Okay. Okay, question from Nancy Brown here. Will the existing grate across 74th way be replaced and widened? The current one is rather narrow and insufficient. Um, Nancy, I believe you're talking about the grate that us engineers call a slot drain. It extends the entire, basically the entire width of that drive axis, and it's about two inches wide for actually stormwater to get in. Um, we are doing away with that grate altogether because it's clearly not working right now. Um, so what we're doing is we're trying our best to really reshape the, the roadway surface there so that um, stormwater is conveyed to the, <coughs> excuse me, to the south side of that access into the channel. Um, and I know in the existing condition, um, stormwater tends to bypass that existing slot drain and overtop the roadway to the properties on the west, um, which as Steve mentioned earlier, we are going to um, regrade the entire width of Boston Harbor Road um, at that location to keep any water uh, from overtopping that roadway as best we can. Um, okay, Boston Harbor iPad question again. Is the work being done in sections and in what and in order that was shown? I'm trying to understand the use of the road for leisure, daily dog walks, et cetera. Um, so as far as the construction sequencing, um, that's, that's commonly a mystery for us engineers until we actually have a contractor on board. Um, some contractors like to have one crew and just do it methodically slowly along the, the frontage there. Other contractors may decide that they want to mobilize um, a number of crews, which would, which would decrease the project timeline. Um, those details we'll, we won't have until a later date, unfortunately. Um, as far as you being able to use the road for leisure, your dog walks, bike rides, et cetera, um, you know, there, there will be traffic control measures put in place. And um, so obviously we'll be asking that everybody be cognizant of that, um, but I, I wouldn't anticipate really too many full road closures for an extended period of time, um, aside from the, the few crossings that we actually have to deal with. Gonna digest this question real quick. Okay, Neil has a follow-up question here. Um, looks like it was regarding the landscape. It says, thanks, Nate. Really asking about the after picture. Like to think funds available to leave impacted areas beautified. Not looking for compensation, but that entrance to area not overly disrupted without making nice when done. Um, for, for any areas that we are disturbing, Neil, we do plan on seeding them so grass will grow over time. Um, as, as far as further improve vegetation improvements uh, aside from grass, we do not plan on providing any of that. And Okay, next question here is from Larry Goldstein. Two questions, okay. How will you sequence construction to minimize disruption, access to the marina? Um, Larry, hopefully you got the answer for that in my previous answer regarding construction sequencing. Next question here, um, will there be new street lights added at the intersections? Um, I'm not aware of any power provider um, plans to provide street lights. Um, since I work for the stormwater utility, unfortunately, I'm a little, no pun intended here, in the dark on what their plans are for adding streetlights. And I believe PSE is the power provider out here, so you can always contact them. Nancy, it looks like there's a, another question here. Uh, Nancy Brown, sorry. Many of us have locked mailboxes, which we want to keep. Nancy, it might be good for us to just pull this into an offline conversation after the open house here. I'm happy to jump on a phone call with you to just step through what our options are on that. OK, 
Okay. So, so it sounds like there are a number of questions here regarding mailboxes and the fact that a lot of those have locks. Um, I don't have an answer for everybody today. I'm gonna to commit to everybody to just do some research on what the county's stance would be on that there. And then what we can do is in our next constant contact email that we send to subscribe users, um, we can provide an answer to that. Thanks for your patience on that answer. Okay, uh, Tom's question here, how will the power poles be impacted on 73rd and Boston Harbor Road? Uh, Steve, can I tell you to pop over to uh, the intersection with 73rd? And, and Todd, Tom, just wanna clarify which 73rd you're talking about here. Um, maybe you could send a quick message to clarify. Because I believe there's um, way and road. Okay, so I assume we're talking about this slide right here, um, the southeast corner. So it looks to me like our proposed disturbance, as Steve is showing, is um, a few feet away from the base of the power pole. And Steve, if you don't mind putting your cursor directly on that power pole, um, it looks like we're going to be able to protect that power pole altogether, Tom. And I'll hang tight here for another minute or two, and we'll see if any more questions come in. Uh, Neil is asking the question, are there any power pole moves proposed with this? Um, I am still coordinating with Puget Sound Energy to confirm whether um, we do need to relocate any power poles. Steve, if you don't mind, go to the next slide, uh, one slide to the south of this. Uh, yep. Um, so there, there is, there are a couple poles shown right here, and so we're currently coordinating with the uh, the utility companies to see if we can protect it or if we do need to have them push those poles back a few feet so we can um, do our work. David, Steve, do you feel, just checking in, did I miss any questions as I ran through all those so quickly? Um, or do you think we caught all of them? Just wanna make sure nobody gets left out here. Steve, if you're talking, you might be muted. Okay, um, just a comment from David Hartley just popped up. Um, the presentation uh, looks like tonight has increased uncertainty about project impacts on frontage landscape compared to the detailed plans that we had access to previously. Hopefully we can get more certainty about that. Um, David, again, I'm happy to send you our final plan set once that's available. And I'm gonna hang on for two more minutes here and see if any other comments come in um, and then we'll uh, call this meeting a wrap everybody. Okay, one more question here. Um, Kirk.Glock looks like they have a question. Uh, if we have further questions, can we email or call? Absolutely. Um, at the end of the presentation, there was the general Thurston County contact information. And then uh, in your chat window on this Zoom meeting, if you scroll all the way to the top, you can see a message from me um, that provides my personal email address and um, my cell phone number.
Okay. Um, one one more question here from Boston Harbor iPad. How much notice will be given when we lose access um, to use of our driveway or any notice at all? Um, we'll make sure that the contractor gives you at least a 48 hour uh, advance notice of um, any driveway closures so you can develop an alternative plan to get to your house. And um, David Hartley, just to answer your question, um, David is just essentially asking why um, we don't have, sorry, why we're asking everybody to type in their questions. Uh, my public outreach manager has directed me to keep it this way just because um, respectfully to everybody, this is a publicly recorded meeting that we do wanna post on our website. And uh, we, we can't control what people on the other end choose to, to say or do on the video chat here. Um, so with that said, it's 650. I don't see any project or any questions coming in specific to the project here. Um, again, everybody knows how to um, you know, contact us if they need it. And thank you all again so much for joining our open house tonight. And we look forward to chatting with you soon. Thanks.